so now we are going to talk about the bacterial genetics in the bacterial genetics our first topic is the plasmids we know that the bacteria has its own chromosomal dna okay and other than chromosomal dna there are some other dna molecules also that the bacteria possess those the extra chromosomal double stranded dna molecules which are circular and found free in the cytoplasm of the bacteria are called as the plasmids so these are the four points in uh, the definition of the plasmid that you should remember that is it is extra chromosomal it is double stranded it is circular and it is found free in the cytoplasm of the bacteria all of these four points are very important in the definition of the plasmids it's extra chromosomal it's double stranded and it's circular dna molecule which is found free in the cytoplasm of the bacteria okay now coming to the some salient features of the plasmids the salient features include number one is that it is not essential for the life of the bacteria that means the bacteria can get a plasmid or can lose its plasmid anytime during its lifetime it is not going to affect the life duration of the bacteria okay so it is not essential for the life of the bacteria and the number two point is that it is showing independent replication so this plasmid shows independent replication it does not depend upon the replication uh, of the chromosomal dna okay it can replicate on its own anytime in the cytoplasm of the bacteria itself then generally it carries the antibiotic resistant gene that is also a very important feature of the plasmid that generally not always but generally it carries the antibiotic resistant genes and those genes are those plasmids are called as the r plasmids okay and then it can integrate with the chromosomal dna of the bacteria and when it gets integrated into the chromosomal dna it is called as episome it is called as the episome and the other feature is that when it gets eliminated from the bacteria it can get eliminated from the bacteria as well so when it is getting eliminated it is the process is called as the curing okay now coming to the classification of the plasmids so the classification of the plasmids can be done on the base on two bases the first is based on the ability of conjugation and the second one is the based on the function of that plasmid so based on the ability of the conjugation we have got the conjugative plasmids and the non conjugative plasmids as simple as that and based on the functions we have got the f plasmid the r plasmid col plasmid virulence plasmid and the metabolic plasmid we will see the function of each one of them one by one first of all coming to the conjugative plasmids so conjugative plasmids are those pl plasmids which are having the ability to transfer themselves to other bacteria through conjugation that means they can uh, when the uh, when the, when the plasmids are present in a particular bacteria then that bacteria can make a conjugation tube with another bacteria and this plasmid can get transferred to the other bacteria so that means this plasmid is helping in the uh, i mean this plasmid is making the uh, bacteria able to transfer itself from the bacteria to the other bacteria that means it is a conjugative plasmid it is helping in the formation of the conjugation tube so it is a conjugative plasmid non conjugative plasmid means which cannot transfer themselves to the other bacteria now coming to the f plasmid so f plasmid uh, are those plasmid which contains the tra genes these are necessary for the formation of the six phylae so in the conjugation chap uh, conjugation topic we will see the role of the f plasmids there in uh, details but remember that the f plasmid is responsible for the formation of this six phyle and uh, it is also responsible for the formation of the conjugation tube now coming to the r plasmid so r plasmid uh, contains the antibiotic resistant genes as the name suggests itself r means resistant so it is it uh, it contains the antibiotic resistant genes then we also have col plasmid col plasmid means the plasmid which contains genes which code for the bacteriocins now what is bacteriocins bacteriocins are the bactericidal proteins which kill the other bacteria in the surrounding so uh, col plasmid is responsible for production of the bacteriocins other than that we have got the virulence plasmid 
which are responsible for the virulence factors in a particular bacteria uh, such as antigens or the toxins so these virulence plasmids code for the antigens or the toxins which are virulence factors for a particular bacteria so those are called as the virulence plasmids then also we have the metabolic plasmids metabolic plasmids means the plasmids which contain enzymes responsible for the metabolism in that particular bacteria so those are called as the metabolic plasmids now coming to the uses of the plasmids in the modern molecular biology so plasmids have the ability to transfer themselves transfer any desired dna segment to any other organism this feature has been used in uh, in the biotechnological um, uh, in different biotechnological methods like the insulin production by e coli in uh, this uh, process of insulin production by e coli we utilize this feature of the plasmid thus in gene therapy also we are utilizing the plasmids very extensively okay so this is all about the plasmids if a short note comes on the plasmid then i hope you will be able to write in detail about that in your exams now coming to the mutations so the second topic is mutations mutations are the random inheritable variations in the gene which are caused by change in the nucleotide sequence we know that all the dna uh, material is composed of four nucleotides okay in different uh, sequences so like we have cytosine adenosine tyrosine guanosine like that we have different uh, nucleotides in different sequence which makes a particular dna okay and whenever there is any variation in that sequence we call it as a mutation but that uh, variation is not only uh, but it is not only the variation which is required to call it as a mutation but also it should be inheritable variation okay it should be a inheritable variation to call it a mutation so any random inheritable variation in the gene caused by the change in the nucleotide sequence is called as the mutation and it can occur in the bacterial chromosomes as well as plasmids also okay it can occur anywhere in these chromosomes as well as in the plasmids now this mutation can occur in two ways one is the spontaneous mutation and the other one is the induced mutation so spontaneous mutation occurs naturally there is no mutagens mutagens means the substances which cause the mutations so spontaneous mutation means it is occurring naturally there is no mutagens but the induced mutations are those mutations which are caused by mutagens what are the mutagens the physical agents are like uv radiation and the chemical agents are like the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and some other uh, hydrocarbons as well can also cause this induced mutation okay so these are the uh, two ways in which the mutation can occur now one point we should remember that mutation may be fatal or may go unrecognized as well it can be fatal to the bacteria or it may go unrecognized as well now mutation may result into the loss of virulence from that bacteria plus it may result into change in the drug susceptibility that means a bacteria may become resistance resistant to a antimicrobial or even it may become susceptible to a particular antimicrobial so it can go in any direction it is not always that the bacteria will become resistant to a particular antimicrobial no it's not like that it can go in any direction either it can become resistant or it can become susceptible after the mutations then this mutation may also result in the change in the antigenic structure of that bac bacteria okay so these are the these are the some of the changes which may occur following mutation in the bacteria now coming to the classification of mutation so mutation are of two types one is the point mutation and the other one is the frame shift mutation the point mutation and the frame shift mutation the point mutation means the substitution of a particular nucleotide by some other nucleotide so suppose we have got a nucleotide sequence in the mrna as u a g c g u suppose this is our uh, sequence of nucleotide in the mrna so if suppose that this g is replaced by 
uh, nucleotide C okay then it will be called as then it will be called as point mutation because this G is substituted by that nucleotide C so it is called as point mutation suppose if a nucleotide get inserted or get deleted from this sequence then it will be called as frame shift mutation why because whenever there is deletion or insertion of a particular nucleotide then there will be change in the uh, uh, reading frame of that particular codon suppose if we insert a nucleotide a here okay so if we add a here then the uh, the codon changes like uh, it becomes uag uag here then it becomes cag earlier it was cgu but after insertion of a it becomes cag it becomes cag so that means it is causing change in the uh, uh, reading frame okay it is causing shift in the reading frame so it is called as frame shift mutation whenever there is insertion or deletion of a particular nucleotide but when there is substitution of a nucleotide by another nucleotide then it is called as point mutation now that point mutation can be of three types one is the silent mutation the other one is the missense mutation and the nonsense mutation so what is silent mutation the silent mutation means the mutation goes unrecognized the mutation goes unrecognized so suppose that you have got a codon uh, u u u okay and and there is mutation in the last u to u u and c okay so if there is this change occurring that means u u u codon and u u c codon both of them code for the phenyl alanine both of them code for the phenyl alanine so there is no change in the amino acid that they are coding that means it will go unrecognized the amino acid sequence in the particular protein will be same even after change of this u to c okay even after the substitution of this u by c there will be no change in the amino acid sequence that means it will go unrecognized this mutation will go unrecognized and this type of mutation is called as silent mutation silent mutation well what is missense mutation so missense mutation means there is change in the nucleotide which is leading to change of the amino acid in the protein so suppose this u u u we have this codon u u u and this u u u codon changes to u u a suppose this last u is substituted by adenine nucleotide that means now it will be coding for leucine instead of phenyl alanine now it will be coding for leucine so there is change in the amino acid in that protein so this is called as a missense mutation because it is causing change in the amino acid of uh, in that protein so this is a missense mutation but what is the nonsense mutation so nonsense mutation is that the codon changes to a stop codon like if suppose we have got a codon u a u and in this the last uh, nucleotide u changes to g guanosine that means it becomes u a g and we know that u a g is a stop codon that means the protein synthesis will stop after this mutation after this point mutation so this type of point mutation is called as nonsense mutation because it is causing stoppage of the protein synthesis so this is a nonsense phenomenon occurring so it hence it is called as nonsense mutation okay so this is the uh, three types of point mutation while frame shift mutation as i described earlier as well that it occurs due to deletion or insertion of a particular nucleotide in a nucleotide sequence in a mrna or in dna so after that uh, deletion or insertion there is change in the reading frame of that uh, codon over that mrna sequence i mean over that mrna so as there is change in the reading frame so it is called as frame shift because a frame is shifted after the deletion or insertion so it is called as frame shift mutation and after that uh, sim uh, i mean uh, depending upon the change in the sequence uh, there is change in the protein uh, i mean amino acid in that protein as well so these are the two types of the mutation that we want to learn about and this is all about the plasmid and the mutation next we will talk about the transformation the transduction and the conjugation which are the different uh, methods of gene transfer in the bacteria